Welcome to Caffeinated Hacks. This is a video one in a series called Basic Tools, where I go through some of the tools used in the offensive security world. In this video series, I will go through a few of these tools, explain what they do, how they are used, and give you a few examples against an actual vulnerable VM to show you what it looks like in the wild. If this sounds interesting to you, grind some beans, boil some water, and maybe hit that subscribe button. Today we'll be starting out with the foundational tools, the real bread and butter tools. Nmap, Netcat, Nikto, GoBuster, Derby. These are nearly always used in capture the flags or pen tests. Pen tests that don't care about noise, that is. So let's dive in. What you're looking at right now is a basic Kali setup. I've got two terminals open. I've got the bottom one here that we're not going to use for right now, and the one up top that I'm going to do most of my work in. First tool we're going to talk about is Nmap. This is the big one. It's always used in some way. It's very powerful and has a lot of depth. It includes a scripting engine, which you can use. It's called NSE, the Nmap scripting engine. It comes with a selection of pre-made scripts, and you can also make your own as well. It's quite extensible. It usually is the first tool when you see a box, when, you, when you're doing an engagement, when you're doing a capture of the flag and you're, you're looking, when you, if you're looking for the box, or if you found it and you're going to start your scans, Nmap's probably going to be the thing you grab. So first things first, whenever we hit a new tool, in this case we can just check the help. By typing nmap, we get quite a list. And I, you see I didn't have to type dash "-h". It automatically hit the help for me. In some tools, you'll have to actually type the tool dash "-h", or dash dash "-help", to get the tool, the tool's help. In this case, nmap worked. And let's go through some of the flags. I'm going to point out a few. The SN flag. This is not going to scan ports. All it's going to do is try and see if the host is up. Really good for initial recon, really good for quick scanning a subnet to see if there are any hosts up on, your, on that network. PN, very useful. A lot of times, vulnerable VMs in Capture the Flag or so on may not respond to a full-on scan from Nmap. PN is just going to skip the discovery part of that and it's going to try and hit those ports directly. What's really nice about that is uh, y you'll be able to find those ports even from an unresponsive host in some cases. Scrolling down, we're going to see a couple other things, you know, timestamp stuff, and then we're getting into scan techniques. So you see they're broken up into different, different categories here. I'm going to point out the UDP scan. By default, when you just hit Nmap and then hit a target, it's going to be using TCP. If you want it to use UDP, you're going to have to specify it using the SU command, or the flag. Just a note, if you don't know what TCP is, you can think of it like the TCP requires a handshake. It's, it actually causes a handshake to work. So if you've ever heard the TCP handshake, you can think of it like that, where first then you, the client, goes, hey, server, I'm here, and the server sends something back saying, oh, I'm here also, also let's sync up, and then you send something back to it saying, okay, we've synced up, here's, here's kind of the finalization of that. So you might hear of the syn, synac, ack handshake. That's TCP. What's great for that is TCP will always ensure a packet gets to you. That's why you have a handshake, right? You're, you're syncing up. With UDP, that is a fire and forget kind of scenario. You may lose packets, but the why you would use UDP is only if you care about getting the most up-to-date packet. So think gaming or streaming, where you don't care what happened three seconds ago, you want the absolute latest frame. You're going to use UDP. In a lot of other protocols, they use UDP for other reasons. Um, DNS, port 53. It's got TCP and UDP. You can hit it on both. So there are certain scenarios where you're 
going to want to hit a box using a UDP scan. If you guys are going for the OSCP, UDP scans are a must. You have to be doing that. And let's see what else is going on here. P, oh, big one. This specify the port or range that you want to use. And you can see there's a couple examples here. You can specify, hey, I'm just going to scan port 22, which is SSH. You can do a whole range, the whole range of every port possible. There's 65,535 ports on the standard box host. And looks like this person is hitting pretty much all of them. Or you can even be a little more selective. You can see that, hey, it's specifying UDP port 53, 111, TCP by default, 137. And it's doing a whole bunch of different things. It's hitting 8080, which is a common uh, test port for a web server, things like that. Here's your HTTP, here's some mail. Um, there's lots going on here, but this this is a, an, a, almost an essential flag for when you're trying to really dive down and maybe not make so much noise as what uh, a broad spectrum scan would do. I call it the broad side, right? All right, if we keep going down, top ports. This can be a good one. Let's say you don't necessarily have specific ports you want to scan. You can just scan by default if you don't put this in there, and if you just do nmap an IP address, it's going to take the top 1,000 ports. If you only want the top 100, or maybe you know you need a little bit more breadth, you can hit the top 2,000 ports, and nmap has that all built in at a table. You, it'll go pick it up. You don't have to think too much about it. It'll go scan those top 2,000 ports and bring back a... Uh, all those results for you. That's really nice to do when you're trying to start small and maybe expand your search bit by bit. Because if you were to do a full 65,000 you know, port scan, that's going to take a long time. So you want to dial that back. And that's why the default already, even without specifying top ports, is the top 1,000. Now we're getting into some service detection and fingerprinting. These can be super useful, especially this first one. That's the actual service detection. It's going to hit those ports, and we're going to talk about ports a little bit. It's going to hit them. It's going to try and figure out what service is there. And you might think this is just a simple, what we call, banner grabbing. So if you if you hit a port just with, say, Netcat, and we'll get to Netcat actually later, it will give you back uh, what we call a banner, which is the string of text that kind of describes what this is. It doesn't happen all the time for every service, but sometimes it does. And if it does, sometimes the version is just given to you right away. You don't even have to like do anything. It just gives it to you. Sometimes it's not that easy. Nmap actually has a, a really nice um, engine, which takes a lot of different parts into effect. It, it really kind of puts it all together, and it can help profile ports and services that may not be as simple as just banner grabbing. I'm going to actually show you banner grabbing and how to do it with Netcat when we get down there. but. If you wanted to do it just kind of on a higher level and actually get a little bit more of a better result, the SV command is, is definitely your choice. And now we're getting into the scripting. Remember I mentioned that nmap scripting engine? Well, here we go. If we just, you actually have to include the hyphen there, the dash sc, it's just going to run the default scripts. That is very handy if you're looking for a broad spectrum scan, you have a target, you don't care about getting detector or anything like that. You're just doing a capture the flag or a, you know, a basic pen test. You can run your SC command, and what that will do is it'll, it'll hit that port, and it'll run just a big battery of scripts based on what port that is. And you get a whole bunch of results, and I'll show you guys uh, that result as I move on. Another one I'm going to show you, OS detection. That's big. Doesn't always mean it's accurate but it can kind of give you a little bit of a heads up of what you're looking at. Uh, sometimes you might see it saying that what you're hitting is a router and it's not a router. It can be hit or miss. It's worth doing anyway. Uh, sometimes that, that can actually change the whole direction because if you can't figure out if it's a Linux or a Windows box, uh, your, your entire strategy is going to change. So it's nice to have that. As we get closer to the bottom here, I'm looking for one in particular. We've got some rating and performance stuff. We're seeing some, I'm not going to talk about any sort of evasion and spoofing. I'm going to leave that perhaps as an, an example of, or some future work. Um, yeah, I'm not going to touch any of that. What I do want to touch on is this. 
if you guys are going for your OSCP or something similar, or if you're doing a pen test, it's not as simple as just hitting a scan and moving on. You need to save your results. You need to log everything you do against that box. The reason for that is it has to be repeatable, and if you do something that breaks something, they need to know exactly what you did so they can fix it. You shouldn't be doing stuff to break anything anyway, but if something were to happen, it's nice to have that exact list of exactly what you did, this is, and there's no questions. When you go, when you use the OA command, or, and you see it's giving you a base file name here, I'll, I'll give you an example of this when we get to the actual examples. But it's going to save the output of nmap in all three of the formats. So the three formats are XML, there's a script kitty format where, yeah, script kitty format, and then there's also the greppable format, which is very nice if you've got other scripts, you can pipe pipe the output of that, in, like just grep it, and you're good to go. Uh, that's actually used quite often. The OA saves all three of them, so you don't have to worry about it, and just give it a base name, so don't put an extension on the end of it, just say like, test file, that's it. V, very useful, add some verbosity around it. Classic, you've got the double V if you need it, to add more verbosity. I have found that this is a useful flag for me, reason, give me a reason why that port is in that state, and sometimes you just want to see what's open, you don't care about the filter, you don't care about the closed, right? So this will only show those ones, kind of sp might speed up things a bit. Alright, so that's the help page. The reason it's important is I highly recommend reading up on Nmap. It's just one of those those tools that you're going to use so, so often that uh, you're if you don't feel comfortable with it, you're, you're, it's going to be very hard for you to move on to other tools. Uh, Nmap is just used so often. And you can see that there's already a few examples down here. And you can see that, hey, this one, these ones are using subnets, right? Uh, right here. 192.168.00 slash 16, so that's your mask. So if it's a 16 mask, that means it's going to hit the first two octics, right? Which are these two. If it was a slash 24, you're going to be scanning, you're going to be filtering all that out, so you're only going to be scanning what's in here. So that's like what? 1 to 255, 0 to 255. The slash 8s, that's going to just mask that, so it's going to do this whole thing, which is a huge amount of scans. It's going to take forever. Usually you only see slash 24s here, because that will get rid of all that. And then you're just doing, you know, classic, hey, what's on my local network, which is the IP 1 to 255. Here we're seeing the PN flag used, and we're specifying the port, 80. And IR, which one's that? I actually haven't seen... Have it. Oh, input. Randomized, randomized ports. I think that's the... If we go to... Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, choose random targets. Yeah, so those are random. Um, and we're bumping up that verbosity. And here's that SN scan, so we're doing a full subnet scan. They're searching for hosts, right? That's what this is going, going on right now. This is looking for a anything in the... Whoop, dragged and dropped. It's doing a, ba a basic scan, just seeing if any host is up in anything here. So that's going to be a lot of hosts, right? Because this is 255 and 255. I don't know what that is, but that's a lot. And then the slash 8s, that's going to be all these... All right, so what does this look like in an actual engagement? Well, I have a target up, so let's take a look. So the classic one that I use quite often, nmap, I'm gonna look for those services. Actually, let's do it this way. When you do a, a scan on your subnet, it doesn't actually matter what number you put here, because you're gonna just you're gonna scan the whole subnet in this space anyway, right? Because I'm masking a 24, which means, well, you know, if I actually get this right, 192, 168, there we go. So local, local IP slash 24. So the first three octics, right? Eight, eight, and eight. That's 24. So it's gonna just forget about those, and it's gonna scan everything here. One to 255. Run that. It'll be really quick, hopefully. There we go. We've got a bunch of stuff. We got yeah, a lot of random. 
Uh, a lot of random stuff. There's the gateway. There's my Raspberry Pi sitting around here. There's me. Hey, look, there's a phone on the network. And there's my target that I care about. So we just scanned the whole subnet and we found a bunch of stuff. 231 is the one we care about. So we're going to dive into a little bit. First things first. We're going to do that PN scan just to show you. This is really nice for just super quick scans. Actually, I'm just going to copy it because why type it out when you can just copy it? Bam. Very quick. And you can see right away we've got port 22. It looks like these are all open. So 22, 80, 111, 139, 443, and 1024. And it does get, it does try and take a crack at what these actually are. And so that's right. It says, you know, 22 is almost always SSH. 80 and 443 are going to be HTTP and HTTPS, so we're looking at possibly a web server, um, RPC bind, and that, so maybe Samba or you know, something like that. Uh, and I bet you this is a, something related to the RPC and stuff. And we'll learn more about that as we add more scans. So instead of PN, let us specify the ports. So this will be a lot quicker, because right, then we're just going to focus on these. Here, I'll do it in order, 22, 80, what is it, 111, 139, 443, and 1024. All right, this will make our scans go a lot faster, so in that it's not trying to run, you know, say, scripts if we're about to do scripts on them. Um, but let's do that. Let's do, let's run and try and enumerate those services a little bit better, but only on those ports, right? Well, only on these ones. So right now it's running not just the scripts, or yeah, what's doing is basic enumeration, but it's running those those um, not scripts, those uh, service enumeration uh, tasks as well. So obviously it's taking a lot longer because it's running them against every single port. And there we go. And you can see the difference between this and this. So you've still got that one column. All it's done is add another one. What's great about this is it actually gives you versions. This is basically banner grabbing, but a little bit more in-depth than that. And it looks like we were right hitting our RPCs. It looks like this was in fact Samba, and it gives you the group. Super nice. Looks like it is an Apache web server. It's looking around, you know, it's got a mod SSL and open SSL. Uh, it's, it's got a bit of stuff going on here, which kind of makes sense if it's running on HTTPS as well. Open SSH 292 is actually I think that's kind of old. That might be, if I was to run against this box, maybe I'd be looking there, but considering there's a web server on here, you'd probably be hitting that up first. And it's Red Hat Linux. Great. And... Now let's run our scripts against it. This will take a little bit longer. You can see how it went from 0.08 seconds to 18-ish uh, seconds. This will be a little bit longer. That's why I kind of limited the ports that we're actually hitting against. Why this is nice is because you'll get everything you see here and more. And I'm not entirely sure how long this will take. I'm expecting maybe 30, 30 seconds. But for all of you who don't actually know, like, if you're saying like, hey, what ports, what are those, right? I've got a little example here. And you, if you've got a target host, right, some server that's up, even your own workstation or laptop at home, they're, they're not dumb. They're not going to just leave that open to the world, right? So what they have is they actually have ports. They've got 1 to 65,535 ports that you can use. The first 1024 are reserved, and then after that there's just more convention than anything. But you can see that I've kind of listed a few ports here. But if, if an external box, say my attacker or my Kali box, is trying to connect to this host, it's got to do so through one of these ports. Not, not specifically, but the one through 65,000 whatever ports. It's got to hit one of those. That means one of those has to be open. In a web server, when we did our scans, we're seeing that these are open. 22, 80, 111, 139, 443, and 1024. So we've got SSH, we've got 80, which is HTTPS. That's a web, classic web opening. 
Um, where's 443? There is 443. There's HTTPS, and we don't, they don't have the other ones. This one's like um, MySQL and RDP, and there's some mail stuff in here, and SNMP, and NFS, and POP. There's more mail, Kerberos. There's DNS. We're going to talk about that. Mail, and your classic SSH, yeah. And oh, it's done. Perfect. So I'm just going to finish up here you have to connect to that box through some of these ports or at, at least one of them so the trick is going to be to try and figure out which ones are open and which ones you can kind of exploit to get there we'll get more to that in a bit but let's take a look at the results you can see there's quite a bit here and you can see that just like up here it's got those port state service and version columns port state service and version but now you've got a bunch of other stuff for port 22, we get to see, hey, what the host keys look like, what type of SSH it supports. For our HTTP server, we're going to get a little bit more information. We're going to see that, hey, it might be, you know, there's some uh, trace method for HTTP that might be useful. Um, and here's what the header looks like. Here's what the title says. It looks like it's a test page for Apache Web Server, so probably default. Didn't really pick anything up for for this or Samba, oh actually do they, yeah Samba, nope it didn't pick up anything for Samba and here's another it's the same web server it looks like 443 but now it's like hey what ciphers are supported which are kind of that's good to know sometimes you can exploit that um, and it gave you a 400 uh, request that's an interesting one did this one give us? No. Huh, interesting so that might be interesting but you can see that it ran a bunch of scripts and tried to get a little bit more information about it. But it took, yeah, not 30 seconds, it took 125 seconds. So as you as you ramp up these scans, it's nice to know some of these flags, right? Because we went from 0 0.08 seconds to pretty much two minutes, well, almost exactly. But look at the information we got. And sometimes, depending on what's vulnerable, depending on what is there, you can get a lot of information from this script scan problem is this thing is loud you're gonna be hammering that server and any any server that's got any sort of detection eh, they're gonna pick you up immediately and just block you straight up so this is for engagements that are capture the flag and this is for pen tests so now that we've kind of got all this information I'm just gonna well, I can just do this clear that away you can also Let's do, let's do a UDP scan. So the thing about UDP, we talked about how it was an SU, right? Hitting a UDP scan. I'm not going to do service. I'm going to hit the top ports, and I'm not going to hit that many. Like, maybe just 50. The thing about UDP is you're going to send a packet. Remember, it's fire and forget, right? It's not like TCP where you're going to say, hey, here's a packet. I expect you to tell me when it gets there, and so on. There's a handshake. UDP is fire and forget, which means if you were to send a piece of mail and you needed to not make sure that it gets there, but you have to wait long enough so that you're not sending another piece of mail and then just kind of like spamming, you're going to have to have a timeout, right? You're going to send it and you're going to wait a little bit. So with UDP, it's slow because it's going to send and it has to wait because it doesn't know if it's going to get a return. So you'll send it to one port and you may not get a response. You'll send it to another port, you may not get a response, but you still have to wait. And so I'm gonna hit those top 50 ports and that's our target. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see what we get. Oh, and yes, because it's UDP, you have to sudo. All right. Well, I really hope that doesn't take too much time. I didn't test the 50. But you can see how it's, it's going to try and run the scans. And while we're waiting for that, oh, great. I am so happy that that did not take a crazy amount of time. You can see that we got way more information than we did with the TCP scan. The reason is because it's, it has to wait that timeout. So you're still going to get the state, and basically close is just like, hey, I didn't, I didn't get a response back in the timeout time. But what it did do is it found, hey, there's a UDP 111 open, and there's UDP 137. Interesting, which 
It might be interesting. Everything else looks closed, but we only did check the, the top 50. So that's how you'd run a UDP scan. Um, top 100, top 1,000, you're going you're gonna to be waiting for a while. Uh, it, it is really nice to have broad spectrum scans, but you got to be willing to wait hours, possibly, um, for those smaller scans where you don't care. You can do stuff like that. And now I'm going to tell you about the TCP broadside. This is fire all the guns, and this will take a long time, but you'll get the most information possible. So if you don't care if you're, you know, if it's not a time-based capture the flag, or if it's just like a, um, or if you're just hitting a vulnerable VM by yourself or practice or something like that, you can do something like this. I'm going to hit the operating system. So I've got. I'm going to enumerate the services best I can. I'm going to run all my scans with my, my scripts. I'm going to try and enumerate the operating system. And then right here, scan every port, all 65,000. Only give me the open ones. Tell me why they're open. And why not? We're going to save the output in all formats to test output. So it'll be test output dot dot XML, test output dot I can't even know what the script kitty format is, and then like output dot grep or something GRP. And now we gotta go to our target. This will take a while oh, nope, need root. What's going on here? Why don't why don't you like this? Is this open ports all reason test nope? There we go. Uh, if you don't know that command, sudo bang bang just sudos the previous command you just ran. So this will take a very long time, so I'm not gonna do it for this video. Maybe while we move into the next one, I'll show you guys what the result is, or we'll, maybe I'll just pause this video and we'll get there.